Hi everyone, um, again welcome to this uh, lecture of uh, uh, the Linux programming class. Um, today we are going to um, actually talk about some examples on uh, Python. Um, we went through an extensive uh, study of Python in the last uh, several lectures uh, culminating in the CGI programming essentially. Um, so today we are going to just uh, look at uh, some of the programs uh, how to write it in uh, Python and then I will just go through uh, the examples and uh, give you some hints and then pretty much like I mean all that we have already learned uh, and then um, if um, any um, if you have any more questions uh, the TAs the can answer those questions. So. Um, yeah, the first one is actually a program on the conditional uh, uh, for example the if statement um, here um, so the um, uh, here we are going to uh, actually like I mean all these programs are here in this um, uh, particular website you can go there and look at it um, uh, these are basically the Python or Pygame programs essentially. Um, and then uh, in this particular program um, basically we have like several variables um, so the variable a that is defined as 4 b that is defined as 5 c defined as 6 and um, once we have uh, these three variables defined now we can do, do some basic comparisons um, we can see that actually um, so the first statement is if a less than b then we just print a less than b. Um, if a is greater than b, then print a is greater than b. So in this case, uh, which one do you think will be printed out? So obviously, like this. So we should look for this one. A is less than b. And then if a is less than or equal to b, then it it prints out a less than or equal to b. And um, we have all these things defined here so let us see how the program actually outputs um, now um, let us see um, let us scroll a little bit down. So if A is greater than or equal to B then it prints this A greater than or equal to B so simple program uh, and then you can see that basically like it follows our original convention like uh, this is the expression and then the colon actually separates uh, and then there is an intent for the, the print statement and then after that the print actually is there so that all the intended ones are part of this if statement now um, um, the equal equal double equal to and equal there's a tendency to mix them um, and you know that actually like equal to is an assignment and uh, the double equal to is an, a logical uh, check essentially um, so, so the, that is what uh, is in this um, comments and as you know like I mean all these things should be comments treated as comments as well. So if A equal equal B which is basically like a logical check whether it is equal to then print this and the not equal to is uh, as you know this the bang and then equal to if it is not equal to then it will print this. Now if A, a is less than B and A is less than C then it prints out this one. Then a non exclusive is A less than B or A less than C, then print this one. Now uh, there is a Boolean data type which is A equal to true, and then uh, this is actually legal. So again, you can do this assignment A equal to true, true, and then if A, then print A is true, which is uh, what it is going to be, and then. Um, 
um, if not a a then uh, and a is false. So now if uh, a is equal to true and b is equal to false and then if a and b then print a and b both are true. Now we make another few more attendants a equal to 3 b equal to 3 and c equals a equal equal b. So now then print c. So now let us see what, what that will output. And then um, as you know like I mean in Python a 1 is actually a true value so if 1 print 1 if a print a so anything that is 0 is actually what is called the false essentially so um, and then we also do this if 0 then print 0 and this will not trigger because um, Zero is false, so this this expression is false. So we now go into this. Now another comparison, comparing uh, uh, variables to multiple values. Um, the first if statement, basically like here in this one, it will appear to work, but it will always trigger as true even if the variable a is not equal to b. This is because b itself is considered. Uh, true just b alone so a equal to c if a equal equal b or b then print a equal to b maybe so basically like even if a is not equal to b this this will be triggered because or b is basically like always true which is non zero the proper way to put it is basically like we need to say a equal equal b or a equal equal the lower case B, then it will never get triggered. So now the other one basically the temperature equal to int input what is the temperature in Fahrenheit. So now you know that actually like input is um, query to get a value from the screen. And then this is the um, uh, question, and essentially, like I mean, whatever the number that you type in, it is converted into the integer data type, and then that is assigned to temperature. And then, if temperature is greater than 90, then print it's hot outside, and then it prints done. So you see, basically, like again, this goes with the print statement goes with the if, and then the other print is actually stays outside. So whether this is true or false basically like this print done will always be performed. And then there is an else clause that you can define so and else is also like um, colon and then print it is not hot outside and then again print done. Um, now the else if statement which is the third um, category this is also like we saw. Um, essentially here we define the if statement then the else if statement and then finally the else if statement and here note that actually the else if um, after the this is the second conditional which is uh, temperature less than 30 and then we need to put a colon after that. So with uh, after each of the expressions we put a colon to denote that basically at the end of the expression and then the remaining ones are the block of code that needs to be that. Now um, the ordering of statements uh, basically the so temperature basically this is the one and then it's hot outside which is greater than um, 110 then oh man you could try eggs in the payment. So what is the mistake here if you look at it basically like if it is greater than 90 it says it hot, hot outside then only if this condition is false then it will go into the next one. So if it is greater than 90 um, it will print this and then it will exit out so this condition will never get executed. So in this one the proper, proper ordering should be like I mean this should be first one 
then that then the 30 and then it is ok outside and then come out. So, let us see what, what are the things basically. So, the first one uh, we saw that it is A is less than B. So, it prints out just A is less than B it does not print out the actual values itself even though we assigned A as 4, B as 5 etc. it just prints A less than B. That is because we did not put the values as an output value. So, in the same thing how do we make sure that um, these things can be output as values for that we need to make sure that these are like the percentage B's and things like that and then and comma after the um, quotes we need to specify A and B so that uh, the values themselves get printed. So this is all the, the various uh, uh, command output um, I want you to go through this basically along with the, the, the this particular all the programs this program pretty much I mean it exercises the if then um, sorry if else if, uh, else um, conditionals uh, pretty well in including all the different um, um, uh, expressions as well gives you a good uh, understanding of uh, all the logical operations that uh, you can perform. Um, so, now let us go to the next one which is the program to calculate the kinetic energy. So, first of all what is the equation for kinetic energy for a moving object. So, basically we compute it uh, as the mass times velocity squared. So, um, and then times half basically. So, half times mass times velocity squared that is the equation for um, computing the kinetic energy. So, we need to take the input as um, as the mass and this is a floating point uh, number then we also need to um, input the um, objects uh, speed and then we will say basically uh, that is um, that is uh, um, the units we define basically these are all in the MKS unit uh, or the SI unit uh, essentially uh, you are familiar with uh, those kind of terms. So, the SI unit basically the mass uh, unit is kilograms and then the, the um, speed or the velocity unit is in meters per second. So, in this example um, we start by saying that basically okay what does this program do like just a, um, just a documentation line which is this program calculates the kinetic energy of a moving object. So, now we define a variable m string and this is the floating point and then this is where we input the mass of the body basically. So, enter the object's mass in kilograms and then we leave it and then we call it as an input and then we assign it to the float data type. So, now um, this uh, basically this results in the prompt and then uh, somebody has to enter in the screen a particular number and then that is getting a, that gets assigned to the string in the form of a floating point number. Let's not worry about the, the comments here. The comments is essentially like I mean, if you miss this float here, you can always um, have this as a separate one. So that's what uh, this comment stands for. Now, to um, get the speed of the this particular object, we define another variable we call the v string, and then v string is also a float. And then here we we 
um, get the speed in meters per second. And then once we have these two numbers, we can simply calculate the kinetic energy as times the mass times velocity squared. And then now we need to just output this one in the form of a string. So see that basically the E is currently its a floating point. We need to convert it into a um, string in order to display this. So um, to convert that into a string. Uh, we basically use the str e function, and then here what we are doing is basically like print first this particular phrase the object has, and then we add the string e, and then we also then um, print the remaining ones, which is the joules of energy. So here one simple example, um, we enter the mass in kilograms. 30 object speed in um, meters per second 5 and then the outcomes basically 375 joules of energy and this is computed basically half times 30 15 times 25 and then that is this number. So pretty straightforward um, you can also construct this in a different way where we can say basically like the object has and then the percentage D um, or um, percentage F kind of formatting spoon and then comma directly give the E and then close parenthesis and that will directly print the value um, as a um, um, string as a floating point number itself it need not con uh, convert that into a string and then um, put the value out. And then you can see that actually, like it is converting it into a string. I mean, the, the it's actually computing in the floating point because um, these ones presumably can be an integer, but you know, you know the output is actually like three hundred five point zero. And then again, um, if you don't specify this as a floating point and instead say integer here, you're still going to get a floating point number for the uh, the energy. Uh, can you tell me why? Because if you remember, actually, like this is the same thing that happened even in tickle. The starting number is a float, and then all the remaining ones are automatically adjusted to the to that particular data type um, in order to compute that number. So even if uh, we take the m string as a integer, it will still result in the same thing. The only thing here is we cannot put this as a string itself we have to take this as an integer or a floating point number. So I would I would urge you to try actually like change this float here to int and then this float to int and then try this program it should run exactly the same way. Okay. So now we go to the next one which is a program for a simple encryption so the encryption essentially is um, we change the value of a text to a different one. Um, and we kind of encrypt uh, the uh, uh, the text essentially. So the there is a simple algorithm here. Um, we'll we'll probably use this. We have a plain text which is um, this is the um, the phrase that we are going to encrypt. So. Um, here you can specify any anything basically for testing purposes, but make sure that you use the encryption and then the decryption followed by that in order to verify whether your encryption program is working correctly. So the plain text is a, is a string which is um, this is the test uh, ABC ABC. The encrypted text we define as an empty string, 
so code code which is uh, you know the index string now we start reading each character at a time from the plain text so for c in plain text so we define um, x is um, the ORD of C essentially and then we essentially like we just say basically um, X is X plus 1 and then we dump out a new character which is the character X basically. And then the encrypted text is um, nothing but uh, basically we just add this C2 to it to the encrypted text basically append it one by one. And then once this loop finishes we just print out the encrypted text. So let us see how this works. So again the, the particular text is essentially like this is a test ABC ABC. So the ORD function as you know basically it just um, gives you in the al in the um, alphabetical order where this particular um, character is and then this is plus one is basically the next character is what it is going to give. So this becomes U I J T which is uh, U is next to T, I is next to H, J is next to I and then T is next to S and then wherever there is a space basically the next character is the, 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 the bang so that is what uh, gets printed out and then where is the full stop it is the slash the next one is slash so these are all the, the ASCII characters uh, from the ASCII text. So now this works um, and then we have some encrypted um, character set now let us do how do we decrypt this one it is fairly simple we capture this one now this is our new string and then we go for the odd of this one and then just reverse this one reverse that is um, x is x minus 1 and then we create the character set based on that. So let us see how the program works. So as I mentioned we have the interpret text then we say basically we go and find out the ordinal of a particular character and then we basically say x is x minus 1 and then we build the character set and then we output that. So now when we decrypt this particular string we get back our original string which is this is a test ABC ABC. I think this one is pretty interesting and pretty straightforward you can actually try with new stuff and in fact what you should do is you should uh, put both these programs into a single program um, and instead of actually defining this as a as a string you should get this string from, from the command line and then you can have fun with it as to you can first output the encrypted string that is print the encrypted text and then later on you can you yourself can decrypt that and then print the decrypted string and then something else to try is basically how do you um, um, instead of the encoding algorithm as the x is equal to x plus 1 try new uh, once basically meaning x equal to x plus 5 or something basically and see how that works. So these are all like some of the fun things that you can do with this program so I want you to experiment with it and then um, so that uh, you feel more comfortable running the Python programs. Okay so the next one is uh, program for exception handling this is something that we saw like I mean how to handle the exceptions and uh, in fact uh, the same thing like the try and accept where the commands that we saw um, so here 
we have to import this particular package the system uh, that we, we also like learnt about how to import this um, in pretty much like last but one lecture I think. Um, so first we will find out what the divide by 0 error is. So we define try and then x equal to 5 divided by 0 except now we say print error dividing by 0 and then uh, we give uh, also like a exception info basically like 0. So we need to print this particular exe info uh, 0 to 1 so we will see like how that gets printed out. And then there are some more things basically like an invalid number conversion. So if you say like uh, int thread and that is assigned to x, so here we say basically like error converting thread to a number, and then we also like give us another uh, system exception. And then um, so number entered equal to false while the number entered equal to false. Number string is input enter an integer. So here we are we are actually like um, converting the number string to an integer and then number entered equal to true and then if it is not then we will say basically like error invalid integer. And then opening file types of error f equal to open my file dot text and then uh, basically like if that file cannot be opened then it prints out error opening file and then all these things can be combined basically so if um, say basically we have f equal to open my file text s is equal to f um, dot uh, read line so you know about this object and basically uh, its method the read lines method and then i equal to int s dot uh, strip that is another method and then um, we x is equal to 101 um, divided by i now you can print many of these exception errors um, IO error value error 0 division error and then and some unexpected errors. So now to generate exceptions essentially like I mean this is another uh, function that we are defining basically get input uh, and then user input is input something and then if the length is 0 that is like if uh, user is not entering anything basically then we just say IO error uh, user entered nothing. So now let us look at what are the, uh, the outputs. Uh, so the first one we actually um, did the um, the divided by zero. So the first one was the phi divided by zero. For that we get the um, error dividing by zero, and then also it. Um, um, since it we also like went to the system uh, info uh, system uh, package for the particular uh, exception it gives the exception info as a 0 to now when we try to convert thread to the number we get a value error as uh, the mean error. Now when we try to um, enter uh, the integer integer number and then um, try to convert that uh, into an or uh, we, we ask the user to enter 
so the user enters um, five, and then this is essentially like I mean uh, it's basically uh, um, it uh, goes through basically because this is there is no error, so um, it's a it's a valid integer, so it goes through. If you put anything something invalid, then it will catch the invalid integer error. Now the opening the my file dot text essentially that's not there so basically um, it just prints error opening file. Now these are the things where we had the multiple ones um, essentially. So for the uh, opening file, um, uh, basically like I mean before that actually the, so there's a IO error. Um, So in this one essentially like it's maybe um, so we, we had multiple error cases um, and um, the only thing there is essentially like it's, uh, when it is reading the line it has nothing basically so it is more like an IO error that's what uh, gets uh, uh, output but it could be a uh, so if, you have, if there is a value and then if the value is zero, then we could have gotten a zero uh, division error. Um, and uh, if uh, something else has happened, then basically it can also uh, come out with an unexpected error. Now the next one is basically like we say, like uh, the enter something which is seven, um, and then. And then this one basically like an, it can um, the user inputs length is uh, zero and then it can give uh, uh, these kind of errors basically. Then we try to run the uh, get input. So that's a brief look in the exception generation. Now the next one is a program on the on lists. So let's see. So this particular program is taken from the Google's Python class. So again, you can go into this particular website. Um, this is this gives you the, the Python class and basically like the um, several examples there. So we will talk about a few of them. So here the main thing is um, the first one that we are going to look at it is the matching the ends. So given a list of strings. Return the uh, the count of number of strings where the string length is two or more, and the first and the last characters of the string are exactly the same. So one thing to notice: um, Python does not have this increment operator uh, that is uh, plus plus. It only has an incremental assignment, which is plus equal to. So Keep in mind about that, and that's what we will use. So um, this particular um, um, function is called uh, match ends, and then 
the arguments are moments. So we define a counter essentially like zero, and then for word in words, essentially like for each of the words, we basically see if uh, the the length of word is greater than or equal to two, and if uh, the first one. Um, it's not the same as the last one, last one minus one actually. So we already studied this these um, notations. Like word zero represents um, actually the first element of uh, the character uh, of the string, and then word minus one represents one from the the last one. And then the last is um, just uh, specified as last. Uh, actually, like yeah, this denotes the last character essentially, the minus one. So if this is the same, then we increase the count, and then we found our word essentially. So we just return the the count for how many such things can exist. So we will see like outputs, uh, output of these kind of programs later. Now the second one is actually it's called front underscore x, which is the list of uh, strings. Return a list with the strings in sorted order. Each uh, except the group, all the strings that begin with x first. So if I have like mix uh, x y z apple Xanadu aardvark, it results in Xanadu x y z aardvark apple and mix. So here the hint is basically like we can do it by making two lists and sorting each of them before combining them. And do you know like I mean so one list is the um, all the words that begin with X and then the second one is the regular sorted one and then we can actually uh, combine the things so so the way we will do it is basically like all the things so it's actually all the things that start with X and all the things that does not or do not start with X so those are the two lists that we will make so it's called front underscore X and then Again, we'll pass the list of words. So we say basically x list and other list. Those are the two lists that we maintain. So we define them as the empty list. And then if the w starts with x, basically, so we know that start with is a method which can be applied to this w object, which is a word inside the list. So then we basically append this word into the X list. If it is not true, then we'll append the word to the other list. So simple basically. So X list dot append W else other list dot append W. And then once we have this, then we just sort the X list separately and then sort the other list separately. So what we return actually is sorted. X list plus sorted other list. So again, very simple as you can see. Basically, like it was only like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines, and then we could achieve that, those things. Now, the next example is to extract the last element from a tuple used for custom sorting. Uh, so the last element is denoted as we know that it's negative one. So um, we basically like um, get the last one, and then that's it pretty much. Then the next program is basically to sort last essentially. Um, so given the list of non-empty tuples, 
return a list sorted in the increasing order by the last element of the tuple. That means basically um, we have uh, if it is one seven one three three four five two two, then it sorted on the last element which is two two one three three four five and one seven. So here the way that we will be using is basically we are using a custom p equal to function to extract the last element from each of the tuple. So let us see how it is written. So again it is just the two lines so sort list tuples is the function and then basically what we do is return sorted tuples and then where key equal to last very easily is written. So now let us see um, the next one which is um, test function used in main to print basically to so print what each function returns versus what it is supposed to return. So we define this function called test got expected those are the two things if got equal to expected then we will prefix with ok else we will prefix with uh, not okay which is x so here we say basically like print x per percentage s got and percentage s expected and um, we define this uh, basically like as prefix and then um, what is we get and then report what we get and what we expected. So in order to test all these functions that we defined earlier um, we will give like n number of programs and then basically uh, we will call this program multiple times with various arguments and then test whether um, this uh, holds good. So the first one we will be testing the match ends for that uh, we give like various uh, um, so various um, uh, strings basically like a, inside a list and then we will test it out and then we will apply various scenarios to test it we will also test the front x here. Um, and then uh, we'll also um, test the dot last one. So for the match ends, pretty much we got perfect. So let us look at uh, our test vehicle and see basically whether we can uh, do the thing. Um, so the first one is actually it identified three such um, um, matches. So can we identify three such matches? One is okay, this is one, this is the other one, and the third one is here. So anything it is over I mean two or more is basically is our target and then the first one is equal to last one because that is the thing. So we know that actually in this list there are three and then that is what we, we expected so when we run the program we actually got three so it is a match.
Now in this one actually our, our thing falls into like one two three these three elements but out of this only two of them are correct so we should get the expected as two and then the last one there is only one that is really correct all the other ones are not matching. So this one we actually successfully tested our little function and then basically we get three expected three from the program and then that is what we got it. Now the next one which is the front underscore X. So here as we said basically the if something starts with X that needs to be sorted and then that this needs to be appended before um, or appended before the other list which is sorted to. So here is a string here is the list and then the sorted one what we expect is X A A A that is the last element followed by the second to last and then this and then B B B and then C C C. So same thing for the next one basically it's X A A X C C A B B B C C C and similarly for the third one as well. So here also like I mean we get uh, OK and then we got the same thing. Basically. Finally, the sort last uh, script essentially, uh, which is um, the uh, number of tuples basically, which is uh, 1, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1. The sorted one will be based on the last one, which is 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3. And then the same case for 3, and then all the 3 are also like tested, and then we are getting OK. So, all these functions really work. So try this out and then try out also like device how we can test those uh, uh, functions. Um, so that is pretty much uh, covers uh, most of this one uh, there will there are a few more examples that I want to go through and then I will probably go through it in the next lecture thanks.